30 and years after th- later, yeah. After 30 years, by the way, everything has been a Simpsons joke, so mm-hmm. don't sweat it. Yeah. yeah. No way around it. I don't want it's you guys to think I'm a, a hack. A few other people have made that joke, too. Okay, well, I'm whatever. Just saying, I'm, I'm saying it's not a... It's this a guy, common joke. I'm not trying here. to belittle your this joke. Guy. I'm saying it's okay to make that joke. Do you believe joke. this, Helen? <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it at all. No, no I do not I'm believe it. I'm saying John Mayer doesn't go. think you're funny. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'd still marry him, so. You'd still marry John Mayer? No, I couldn't. I couldn't. You couldn't marry somebody who didn't think you were funny? In no regard? No, I don't think so. It's John Mayer. But he doesn't. How are we going to have a conversation? Okay, we're just like talking about your life. He cares about who you are. Where's the line? What if somebody thinks you're mildly humorous? Fine. You'll take mildly humorous. Well, because you said everything else is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll take mildly humorous. You gotta, I mean, I would go insane trying to make that person laugh. They think that you're mildly humorous. Wouldn't it be a Can't relief? believe that you're a professional comedian. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't like you be relieved that I you don't have like... to try and make them laugh? No. It would drive me insane because I'd be like, what is your humor style? Like, I can't figure it out. You would just, keep, you know, you just like, accept it? Or if they like loved Jack Black and they hated me, I would be like, I can't be with this kind of person. Like, I can't, I can't be with you. Love like, Jack Black. <laughs> Jack Black night. <laughs> First date, you're like, well, so what, who do you like? He's like, I don't know. Like, um, but wouldn't that explain why they don't think you're funny? He's like, oh my God. Yeah. We're watching Gulliver tonight. It's date night. Ooh, have fun. Even Jack Black fans aren't watching Gulliver's Travels. He goes deep with Jack Black. Right. Oh, I thought you said that's what you were doing. No. Mm. If a guy wanted to watch Jack Black movies with me, no. I'd be like, you need to find a new girlfriend. Hmm. It's John Mayer. John Mayer's coming with uh, The Dead. Yeah. Yeah. I don't listen to their music, and I don't think that's enough for me to want to go to that show, because John Mayer's playing with them. You know what I mean? Okay. I'm not saying I wouldn't enjoy it. I'm just uh, not familiar with it. Right. Hippy-dippy jam music, right? I understand. Dead and Company. He's been mm-hmm. with them for a while. Yeah. Yeah. So it's some of the guys from Grateful Dead. It's like a couple dudes from the Allman Brothers, and it's John Mayer. Mm-hmm. I think Bruce Hornsby sometimes is with them, too, who's real good. That's going to be Blossom in July. So you won't go to that just to look at John Mayer? No, no, no. Okay. You want to see He's him? He's still playing guitar. I know, but I don't know any of the music. Not that I need to. I wouldn't pay for tickets to go to that. If somebody was like, hey, I have an extra ticket. Do you want to go with me? I would go. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't buy tickets to that. I got a letter from Black Jeffrey. He said, uh, Alan, please tell Mary I'm a proud University of Wisconsin Madison graduate. And being from Madison, we always said, Stout, Stout, the easy way out. Ah. Because you dub Madison. Everybody's all hoity toity mm-hmm. because they're going to Madison, right? It's like if you're at U of M in Ann Arbor. It's one of those towns. Mm-hmm. Madison, the main school, University of Wisconsin, everybody's all hoity. They call it the Wisconsin Ivy. It's like, yeah. We still going to still going to school in Wisconsin. Stop it. Uh, but that's how they feel. Whether if somebody goes to Stevens Point, I dated a girl who went to Stevens Point. So if somebody goes to Stout, you got to get one of them U Dub Madison gigs. Mad I'll City, baby. My, I will try my best. All right. You could be talking to. You could have how many people were at this gig you had at Stout? Probably twenty. You could have fifty people ignoring you in hey, the cafeteria. Look at that. <laughs> you still get paid. Well, maybe. Maybe. The girl called me yesterday and was like, hi, this is so-and-so from Student Affairs. I just want to apologize. We're going to get that in the mail to you by the end of the week, so should you should have it by the end of next week. And So they still need a paper trail? Mm-hmm. You, she can't be like, you know what, because it, we certainly, I said that and I was we've like, inconvenienced you enough. Well, and I told her, I was like, you know, my rent was due, and I, I now I have a late fee, and this, that. And she's like, you know, we sincerely apologize, and, you know, unfortunately, with it being through the university, it has to have, you know, the basically the paper trail. The we, need this, we need this, we need this, we need this. But, Whatever. Okay. I wouldn't be annoyed if I knew it was going to take that long. Like I said, I got to the point where I am out of money. So I was like, oh, okay, now I can pay my bills. I can do all this stuff with this check because in my contract it says I would get paid the night of. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't have spent so frivolously. Say that word for me. Frivolously. Frivolously. No, it's frivolously. Frivolously. So feverishly. So feverishly. (laughs) (laughs) Shaking and sweating. Um had yeah, I but known, rent is not frivolous. No, but I'm saying like I, she spent I frivolously up until not even that frivolously point. like because I had to pay for my How flight. How many pairs of boots you buy last week? One, two. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, Once. you should never spend money you don't have. But I did have it. You didn't. <laughs> it was supposed. You pre- it was you in pre- my spent, contract. You pre-spent this money. Yes. Eh, it's no bueno. Not all of it though. Some of it. I mean, most of the money that I spent that got me to like the zero point that I'm at is was to get to this gig. I had to pay for my flight. I had to pay for my rental car. I had to pay for my own hotel. 
It's a couple hundred bucks. So, how much are the foot photos going for? <laughs> 150 a piece. You heard your, you got your marching orders, gentlemen. $150 a piece. $75 up front you into can my pay, Venmo, Mary Santora, and then $75 after you get the pick. You can pay for your rent for the next year. You can prepay your rent for the next year. Okay. You'll be creatively freed because you'll be financially unburdened. Yeah. I know a guy that's got it for 10 bucks a piece. Ooh, somebody's already <laughs> undercutting you. By quite a bit. There's a lady at alancockshow.com that doesn't have any toenails. Oh. Who well, she's is? Got, she's got some toenails. She's being not, ripped out. Not yeah. being ripped out. She loses two. <laughs> not many. Mm-hmm. Well, she has fewer. Fewer two. Yeah. Fewer, yeah. Fewer toenails. I bet she could sell pictures of her feet, but to a completely different type of audience. Hey, they're getting clicks. The throw up Thursday at <sighs> alancockshow.com is the woman who is having her uh, awful, awful toenails removed because they're so. What's the word? Diseased. Disgusting. And deformed. These ones are. Oh, what is it? have to look at the thing. Kirk Douglas, uh, of course, he died. He was 103. I was reading about a guy who is 107. Pincer. She's got pincer nails. Pincer nails. Like a lobster? Like yeah. a Doberman? Yeah. Like a lobster. They're so pincer. P-I-N-C-E-R. That's the type of dog, right? Yeah. A Doberman pincher? So, they're just is it, all... I thought it spelled P-I-N-C-E-R. There's an H in there, Maybe I think. pincher nails? I don't know. But they're, they're all like curled over and like they grow into oh, stop. I don't the even nail bed and stuff. It. It's so great. Huh. And there's one <laughs> point when it comes out and they're pulling it out, you see all this n- white nail that was just under the skin. Stop. Please they call stop it talking wings. about it. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Uh, <clears throat> so it's such a relief when they finally get it out. Of course. And if you've ever had to remove one of your toenails mm-hmm. through injury or whatever, whatever else, I certainly wouldn't say that it was satisfying, but I bet it is for her. Oh, yeah. I mean, she's all numbed up, so she doesn't feel anything. And now she's not going to have that pain that she's had. And it looks like they got that way from wearing, like, pointy shoes. That's not what happens when you wear pointy shoes. I wear plenty of pointy shoes. I think if you wear them for a long time. Maybe I, I skinny mean- shoes, not... Pointy, the pointy like if you shoe. wear them too tight is what I'm saying. Maybe if she's yeah. wearing shoes that don't fit her. But I yeah. have plenty of stilettos that come to a point. I've never had a problem. I was going to say, even if you have shoes of that style that technically fit you, you're still squeezing all of your toes into a pointy shoe. Right. Yeah. But for it to get th- th- like that, that's you'd have to that. wear them, what, nonstop for a month? That's just like, ba- that's, no, she's I mean, blaming I'm, the shoes. That's bad hygiene. I'm guessing it's... I don't think it's a hygiene thing. I think it's. How it's would your the, nails just? Do, they don't happen like that by, overnight. Yeah, but it grows into that by wearing those shoes all day, every day for years and years and years. But yeah. all, all the but all think of all the women who wear the same shoes all the time and don't end up like that. Mm. She's probably not. Putting, all right, maybe it's a combination. She's probably not putting powder in her shoes or anything like that. They're not disease. They're just they they've grown poorly, like they grew like at a curve. What could happen is because I've had it happen where if I'll wear um, my chucks will sometimes give me ingrown nails because they are so so thin, like so skinny. Mm-hmm. Um, but you just, you have to take care of it right away. Where, right. So like, and she didn't. Right. And so it got worse and worse and worse and she continued to wear shoes that would aggravate But it. I can't imagine that you could even walk in shoes. If, if your toes were that bad, because even if your toenails get too long, let alone ingrown, you yeah. can't wear shoes like like physically. Yeah, it will know. hurt so bad to even try to get your shoes. I don't know sh- what this lady's doing, shoe. but I applaud her for letting this guy film it. Ugh. The removal process is amazing. So gross. Well, maybe it's for medical students. Huh? Maybe there's some instructional value <laughs> to this. For our purposes, there's a great deal of entertainment value to yes, it. Yes, there is. The toe bro. Is it like Dr. Pimple Popper? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like she's kind of fallen out of favor. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a ceiling on being entertained by popping pimples. There's a law of diminishing returns there where you go, all right. You're only going to be moved by the increased size. And those things can only get so big, you know? It's like, oh, well, here's uh, some more blackheads. You're like, yeah, I'm over the blackheads. Done it. You become uh, inoculated to Mm -hmm. it. That's why I think that this grosses me out so much is, too, because, like, you guys are like, oh, I love watching it or whatever. Like, w- at what point is are you going to be desensitized? And then you need something even more gross and even more pussy and even more yellow. Mm. <laughs> even more yellow. Whatever. I just go down this well every once in a while. I don't go down it too often. but uh, Once a week. Now, yeah, now that I'm back on this, uh, it's about once a week, yeah. I'll find <sighs> something that's rather gross. 
Yeah, enjoy. sometimes just exposing yourself to something that is um, and it's medical kind too. of terrifies you to some degree. You it's, know, it's a it, way to to face your fears. It's one thing yeah. it, when it's people that are just ripping out their toenails or pulling out a tooth or something, which I, I, I can think of a good tooth <laughs> removal video that I enjoy. Uh, Self removal. Like, yes, uh, in a parking lot uh, or no parking zone is the one I'm thinking of. He uses this guy uses like a broken knife. He just <gasps> rips his tooth out. There you go. Yeah. He doesn't even want his teeth parked in his mouth. Mm -hmm. That's how seriously this guy takes he posted follows, signs. Follows but don't rice. worry. He He's cleans no off his knife in some Pepsi. He gets all the dog food off of it by cleaning oh, it off in some Pepsi. Why did that tooth have to come out? Or was he doing it for it the, hurt so the bad gram? Or oh, yeah, he had a bad tooth. He had uh, to remove a tooth that was uh, dead. That's what you he get, kids, when you drink tooth. Pepsi. Yeah. <laughs> when you drink Pepsi and eat dog food, <laughs> you better have a, a rusty knife ready. His name's Fed Smoker. Shout out YMH. You can't afford quality dental care. You're going to need a knife and uh, that, that's it. Mm -hmm. A knife. Yeah, he just pops it out. You can hear it when it pops. It's so bad. I was going to say, if the tooth is that bad, it's not going to require too much work to get it out. Mm -hmm. It's probably already hanging on by... A nerve. Yeah. You know, you just... Remember when you were I mean, a kid? he was working at it. Like, he was... I don't think it was quite uh. ready to come out. He he worked that knife in there and got it out. It was... Come on. Knife. It's bad, yeah. I'll I remember when I was a break. kid and I'd have no, a... No, I'm not going to watch that. When I was a kid with a loose tooth, I used to love getting them out, like turning them, oh, like, yeah. twisting them to really? get them out. Oh, twist them around. Oh, oh, man. My dad would feeling. always do the thing where he would take like a towel, like a hand towel, and he would say, I just want to dry it off. I can't see it. if it, Like, I can't touch it because it's, you know, you have spit on it. So then he would we'd be like, no, no, no. Okay, just dry it off. And every time he pulled it out, that was every single time. Up until I was like, what, when did you stop losing teeth? 10? How was he able to fool you every time? Is I, my because question. Because he would be like, no, 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 for real this time. Like he would tell us, no, no, no. <laughs> We'd lie to you every just, time. And every time we're like, okay, but just dry it off then. <laughs> like, what was the obsession with dry teeth? Well, he would say that, that's what that he would say. He couldn't, he couldn't get in there because there was like saliva. Right. So he can't look, he can't touch it to see how loose it is because of the saliva. So he'd mm. have to dry it and off. You guys believed that. He's our dad. Repeatedly. We're seven. Right. Okay. Just don't, just don't pull it out. Except after the second or third time he does that, you go no. You go no. I know what you're going to do. I don't know, man. Wow. I, uh, I enjoyed that too. Like I would, once I had a loose tooth, I would just start twisting it and twisting, it and you could feel like the fibers break. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. Yeah, me too. Or I like was you great. take your tongue and push it all the way forward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was not going to wait for it to organically come no. out. Right. I'm like, I want my 25 cents tonight. Now. Tonight. I didn't realize I was spoiled until I got older, but I would get like fibers, like nice. five dollar bills or like at least three dollars each tooth. Like you guys got change. We I think I got money. like a dollar, maybe yeah, I got a quarter. Cents. Well, we got eight. fifty cent piece. Don't think mm -hmm. at least. I remember one time I five dollars for a tooth. Uh huh. But, but my mom used to compensate because we didn't have a dad. <laughs> uh, so. For a tooth, <laughs> two fifty each. It's a tooth. So <laughs> your mom would just overpay for everything because you. What does not having a dad have to do with your she tooth? Would, she would spoil us in every aspect possible, like with toys or like anything to distract us to make it seem to overcompensate the I fact see. that we didn't have a father. So everything was, you know, above and beyond. And I didn't miss. And my how'd dad. that work out for? Her? I mean, we didn't miss our dad. You can't miss something you never had, really. So yeah, it, it worked. But I didn't realize I was spoiled until I was older because I was like all. Oh, I mean, all my other friends would tell me, they're like, you got $5 for a tooth? I'm like, yeah, the tooth fairy, like, she'd be giving me money because my teeth are great. She's Wait, did you think that the tooth fairy was compensating for you having no dad? No. Why but, was the tooth fairy overpaying? I fully understand. I thought you... I had, I, but that's the thing. I didn't know she was overpaying. I didn't know people got quarters. Like, who gives change? I so, see. I, so when I would go to school and I'm like, guys, like, I got $5 for a tooth. They're like, whoa, you got a $5 bill? I'm like, you didn't. Like, Plus, no. the tooth fairy, you know, it makes sense that you'd want to carry paper bills because the change would just weigh you down and make it harder to fly yeah. house to house. So the paper money, <laughs> it's practical. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it, that makes sense. I, I caught my mom one time. I, I was asleep and I you, you put the tooth underneath your pillow like I did, but I used to put it in like a little um, <coughs> pill bottle, like an empty pill bottle. My mm -hmm. mom had plenty of those laying around the house <laughs> for whatever reason. <laughs> for whatever you reason. Your mom's an addict? She's, she's, trying to, she's not an addict. She's but trying like, to sedate herself <laughs> after days and days with Pound Cake and his brother. No, we just had pill bottles. I mean, she was a nurse. I don't know how she got them, <laughs> but pill bottles. Um, and then I would put it in there, and then I, would, I woke up during the night one night, and she was taking the pill bottle out. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, 
oh, the tooth fairy came. I'm just changing it out so you could sleep better or something. She's like, isn't that hard? You can't feel that. I was like, no. She's like, well, yeah, this is a lot smaller. It's easier to stuff the money in there. She come up with some ruse. Some and how lie. old were you? Fifteen. Uh, <laughs> old enough to know better, probably. Fight, you you were old enough to know yeah. And so she put the, I was like, oh, okay. She, I was like, oh, well, how much did I get? She's like, look at that in the morning. And then she put the pill bottle back underneath my pillow. I was like, okay. Wow. Yeah, they, they could have been my pill bottles for all I know. I don't know. Huh. I was a kid. So how old were you when you found out that the tooth fairy was not also paying your uh, phone bill? <laughs> tooth, you, you mean the tooth fairy's not paying for my car insurance and my uh, phone bill? Your car insurance. Oh. Hey, I, I, I need the number for uh, for customer support or something. That auto insurance fairy is not coming across with what I need. Like a good that fairy be- paying your car no. <laughs> oh, come on, man. I mean, you know, it's whatever. You fairy. Right. Yeah, okay. Well, $5. Congratulations. I didn't get no $5 for two. But boy, tearing them out were great. I did really? that for free. I did the work for free. It was for the love of the game. It wasn't for the 25 cent piece. Did I want to stock them up because I was going to the arcade? Of course I did. The teeth? The quarters. Oh. Actually, it's funny you mention that because there was a very short lived uh, arcade uh, near my house where the guy retrofitted all of the most popular arcade games because of the demographic that was coming in there, you know, young boys from 7 to 12. And he retrofitted all those games so that if you didn't have a quarter, you could uh, insert a tooth. And play the game that or way. Or he called himself the Tooth Fairy, and you brought in teeth. He kept them for whatever he wanted and was like, you get three free quarters. That's per right. tooth. That's right. And then this weirdo sitting on a t- pile of molars. Oh, yeah, yeah. He had a big, uh, when they finally arrested him years later for what I assume was an unrelated crime. Oh, boy, they found a huge uh, plexiglass uh, container full of children's teeth. Yeah. Yeah. He tried to explain to them, guys, there's nothing nefarious about this. Yeah. I just have a giant container of children's teeth. They're just doing experiments. That's they didn't all. smell them. They didn't believe yeah. them. Smell like children. They didn't believe them. They hauled them off. Hmm. They said, oh, yeah, you got all these teeth? Where are the bottles of milk that you're supposed to put them in? <laughs> he didn't have an answer for that. <laughs> didn't have an answer for that. They put them in a paint can, a spray paint can, to, and when you shake it up, that sound? kid's tooth. Teeth. There you go. Yeah. Or the thing at the bottle of a can of Guinness. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a tooth. Oh, my tooth is in the... All right. <laughs> hey, Woody. Dylan. Yes. How's your day, brother? Good. What's up? Uh, nothing. I'm just sitting here enjoying a piece of whorehound candy and a couple fingers of Grey Goose. Whorehound candy. Well, I, I like the way Woody lives. He's at the lake house. He's eating uh, candy and vodka. That's living the yeah. life, boy. That is yeah, the I- life. When was the last time you had a piece of whorehound candy? That's for... Probably never. Really? Yeah. It's definitely it's definitely an old timey, old timey thing, and they are just completely horrible. Haven't been to a Cracker Barrel in a long, long time. <laughs> right. Yeah. But uh, you guys are talking about uh, losing teeth as a kid and getting them pulled out. My mom had a really weird way of doing it because I was so deathly afraid of anyone touching my my mouth when I was a kid. You know, I wouldn't even let people look in my mouth. And but. As soon as I had a loose tooth and my mom found out about it, she would say, she would like, uh, why don't you have a, a piece of saltwater taffy? You know, I know you like saltwater taffy, and she would just let me chop on this stuff until eventually it would just pull it, pull it out, you know what I mean? She didn't uh, take a piece of dental floss and tie one end to the bumper of the car? I just need your car, no, yeah, your teeth to be I, more I sticky let, I so I can pull it out. That, but I, I, would certainly, I would certainly eat the candy that she'd offer me that would end up eventually yank it out. You're like, Mom, don't you have any whorehound flavor taffy? You know how much I love whorehound, Mom. <laughs> but a mint aficionado. What's whorehound? Mint? Mm-hmm. Mm. All right. Okay, thank you, Woody. There's Woody. Two fingers of Grey Goose. Some whorehound candy. He's a happy man. Hey, our buddy Rob Ward is, as the kids say, in the house. He's an alum of the Alan Cox Show Comedy Tour. You saw him last year. He's going to be at the Funny Stop next couple of nights, too. So he'll be uh, back to join us shortly. 35192. You want to send me a text? Uh, you can hit us up at alancoxshow.com. The Alan Cox Show. 100.